In this video, I just want to quickly run through these two phenomena, which is time dilation and length contraction, which are direct consequences of the second postulate of special relativity, which says that the speed of light is the same for every observer, regardless of the relative motion of the source. These two phenomena always work with harmony with each other, so you never can leave one out when trying to solve some problems, otherwise you will inevitably get paradoxes. So imagine a clock where you have a bouncing photon. If you are in the rest frame of this device, then the time interval for one bounce is just length divided by the speed of light c. But if we look at this device in a relative motion, then we see a photon trajectory like this. But according to the second postulate, we have to measure the same speed for the photon. But now the path it travels is longer. So we can use the Pythagoras theorem and get this expression. We know what L is from our at rest reference frame. So we can just plug that in and with some manipulation we end up with this expression which is called the time dilation. This shows us that the time interval in a moving frame is always larger. And therefore we can say that if we are in a relative motion, the time will always slow down in a moving frame. Some people call this a clock paradox, where you argue which time ticks slower because these both observers are in a relative motion with each other. But it is important to understand what the word relativity means, because these two observers would also not agree on their velocities or positions, which are also relative quantities, like time in special relativity. But time dilation is not enough, because imagine this scenario where you are somewhere in a universe on this planet and there is this star that you measured to be in a distance that we call L. And if you send a spaceship towards it with a speed v, then the length l is just v times delta t. But for the moving observer, the clock should slow down according to time dilation. And you measure that the length for him must be different because this time is different. Now we see that this part here is just the length l and this is the length contraction equation. Now I want to briefly mention the logic we used in this video. If we look at the logic machine again, then we used these two postulates and derived another consequence of special relativity, which is time dilation. And then we used the time dilation and the first postulate, ran them through a logic machine again and got a length contraction. So basically we needed the length contraction in order for time dilation to make sense, otherwise we would have problems with the first postulate of relativity. Because for the moving observer, he can equally claim to be at rest and his clock must tick normally for him, and the clock on the planet should slow down. The only way he could reach the destination in lower time t prime, as measured from the planet, is due to the length contraction of this distance between the planet and the star. But you might ask, what does it have to do with the first postulate of special relativity? Because why should these two observers agree that one of them reached the destination sooner? We are in a relativity, right? Things should be relative. But this really contradicts the first postulate of special relativity, because if you look at this scenario, where the observer at the spaceship left the Earth at the biological age of 20 and then crashed into the star at the age of 27 from the observer on Earth, then this has to be true for the moving observer and everybody else in the universe. If this wasn't the case, it would really contradict the first postulate of relativity that every experiment has to have the same result no matter what reference frame you are in. So we see that the time dilation and a length contraction work together. For the observer on the planet, time shift was due to time dilation, but for the observer on the spaceship, it was due to length contraction. And remember, these are not optical effects due to the limited speed of light. 
as some people might think. Time dilation and length contraction are real effects. And now we are scratching the surface of the twin paradox, but I want to do a, another video specifically for this topic, so I'm not going to show you any more information in this video, so thank you for watching and see you next time. By the way, if you found this video informative, I would really appreciate if you press the like button because it really helps spreading this video to more people. So I really appreciate it and thank you.